Young Show. Hello. Have you ever noticed that most fairy tales end with, and so they got married and lived happily ever after? Well, that's fairy tales. For grown-ups, here's a suggested change. And so they got married and began to learn how to live together happily. Now, the marriage in our story tonight is not a young one. It's 17 years old, and they live in New York City. No, I'm sorry he didn't say when he was coming back. Well, since his picture's been released, he... Well, he's sort of become public property. Oh, you know, uh, interviews, television, story conferences. <laughs> yes, they've even got him christening battleships now. Oh, no. No, no, I'm sure he didn't forget he was had a luncheon date with you. No, Mr. Waring would never do that. Could I give a message for you, Miss Aldrich? Oh, uh, just a minute. Miss Aldrich. I'm sorry, I thought I heard him come in. Yes, I'll have him call you as soon as he gets... That's right. Oh, no. No, I'm not his secretary. I'm his wife. <laughs> Another Indian bit the dust, poor kid. He has certainly handled that beautifully. Form 240B. Angry? Chris, there's no way to answer that without sounding angry. Oh, I'm sorry. It didn't mean a thing, I swear it. I guess I was a little bored when the play finished. I know. Oh, I've been a fool, darling. Thank heavens I've just sense enough to appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. After all, you and Debbie are my whole life. Hey, Chris, remember me? Oh, oh. Joe, I'm terribly sorry. Hello, oh, Joe. Yeah, no. How are you? Look, he's brought us a new script. Yeah, the studio's on my neck, Linda. They keep reminding me that Chris agreed to do two pictures. Mm -hmm. When we find a part that we think is right for him. Right, Linda? Right. Read it tonight, will you? Uh, dear, I don't think I can read it tonight. I haven't even finished this fan mail. 20 years on the New York stage, maybe 20 letters. One picture, a whole barrel full. Well, the script's more important than the fan mail, then. I know, I know. I'll read it, Joe. Well, how you been? Just fine. How's sure. yourself? Couldn't be better. Trilby. You mean they want Chris to play Svengali? Well, it didn't hurt John Barrymore to play it. What do you think? Well, seems a pity to cover up that face with a lot of crepe hair. And anyway, isn't it really the girl's show? Well, that's final. Absolutely and definitely no. Joe? Well, that's that. Mm -hmm. By the way, Bradley's wants you to endorse and shirt. No. And who am I has you penciled in as a mystery guest? Yes. Mm -hmm. And before I forget it, Harry Delman phoned. He wants you for the Red Cross benefit in September. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> what do you think I should do for them? Oh, we'll find something. There's plenty of time. Mother! Mother, is Daddy home? Yes, dear, he's right here. Oh, here I there am, you darling. Go. Oh, Daddy, I got it. I didn't tell you about it before because I was afraid I mightn't get it. Oh, you'll help me, won't you? Well, of course I will. What's she talking about? The senior play. They're doing Dear Brutus. And I'm playing the daughter he always dreamed of having. Oh, five girls tried out for it, and I got it. Guess who picked me? Angela Brooke. Who's she? Oh, really, Daddy? She's only the most important new actress in ten years, that's all. Chris, you remember her. She's the girl who made such a stir in the revival of Wild Duck. Oh, deliver me from those off-Broadway stars. And their Stanislavski methods. Oh, really, Daddy? She's not like that at all. You'll see. She's coming to pick me up for rehearsal. Oh, you will help me, won't you, Daddy? It'll be an honor. Oh, Mother, I'm so excited, I can hardly wait. <laughs> well, you better learn to wait. You're going to have a lot of rehearsing to do now. <laughs> oh, Mother. <laughs> I've got it. Act two, scene two. Oh, I know what I'll do for the Red Cross benefit. The dream scene from Dear Brutus with Debbie. Oh, Mother. Uh, can't you just say it? Christopher and Deborah Waring in a scene from Dear Brutus. Oh, Daddy, I love you. <laughs> well, the sentiment's beautiful. Oh, I'll get it. That must be the modern Bernhardt making an entrance. They're in here. Come on in, Miss Brooke. Thank you. Oh. Well, you're Debbie's mother, of course. She looks just like you. Mrs. Waring, you have such a gifted child. Oh, we hope so. <laughs> Miss Brooke, this is Mr. Davis, our manager. How do you do? And this is Debbie's father. Mr. Waring, I can't tell you what a privilege it is to meet you. I've been a fan of yours for years, ever since you did Hamlet. You must have been in kindergarten. Oh, no, high school. I cut classes every Wednesday afternoon to see your matinees. I learned so much. 
You were just wonderful. Thank you very much. Well, a month later, Debbie appeared in her school production of Dear Brutus. And she was good. Not Helen Hayes, but good. Linda planned a party for her after the show. And Debbie invited Angela Brooke. Chris said he'd drive her to the house. But all the other guests had come and gone. And still, no Chris. Was that two o'clock? Yes, dear. It's time for budding young actresses to be in bed. Daddy's not here yet, and, and Angela? Well, maybe Miss Brooke decided it was too far to come all the way out here. They probably stopped somewhere for coffee. But why didn't they come home? Mother, this was supposed to be my party. I know, dear. All right, guess I'll go to bed. Good night, Mother. Good night. Good night, Joe, and thanks for everything. You really were wonderful in that play tonight. Yep, a real wearing. Good night, Debbie. Good night. I could break his neck. You want some more coffee? No, thanks. I better be on my way. All right. Uh, Joe? <laughs> Don't go just now. No, no, no. She must be blonde and beautiful, just like you are. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Waring. Uh, oh, you must have given us up. I'm terribly sorry. Well, I... We I, got to talking and I forgot about the time. Yes, I understand. I, I'm sorry you missed Debbie. She, she just went to bed. Oh, don't blame Angela. It's all my fault. You know, you have the most persuasive husband, Mrs. Waring. Oh? He's convinced me that the only thing I really want to do in the world is to go to Hollywood and play Trilby. Trilby? That's right, Trilby. Isn't she ideal for it? Well, I take it this means you'll play Svengali after all? You may take it that I will. Well, life is full of surprises. I'll call the studio in the morning. Oh, don't bother. I've already called them. Now, if I'm forgiven, perhaps Chris will call a cab for me. Well, I'll be glad to drop you. Oh, no, you don't. I'll drive her home. I had a tough time selling her this part. Now I want to tell her how to play it. <laughs> well, good night, Mrs. Waring. I hope we'll meet again soon. I'm sure we will. That's right, in Hollywood. Come on, beautiful. Oh, this will be a pleasure. I have an awful lot to learn, you know. And I'm just the one that can teach it. Here we go again. Linda, I often ask myself, why do you keep on taking it? Joe, I asked myself that question a long time ago, and I'll tell you. It's partly for Debbie. She needs him. And in spite of all this nonsense, he really is crazy about her. And partly for me, his habit. <laughs> My bad habit, he sometimes calls himself. Then there are the marriage vows. I promise to take him for better or for worse, you know. Not just if he'd be a good boy. A good boy? Mm -hmm. I could break his silly neck. So could I. By early summer, the Warings were on the coast, and so was Angela. There was the usual gossip, but Linda wisely ignored it. As for Chris and Angela, they were too absorbed in Trilby and each other to care. Trilby was finished and previewed in record time. It gave every indication of being a smash. I've never read such rays, Linda. Yeah, they are marvelous, aren't they? What, Chris? Oh, he's around someplace. I haven't really seen him since yesterday noon. Here, take a look at this one. Good morning. Oh, hello, Joe. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. I thought you'd like to read these. I've seen most of them. Oh, here's a new one, Elliot. Hey, listen to this. Christopher Waring and Angela Brooke make a perfect combination. I'd like to see them in a good old-fashioned love story. Certainly called that, didn't he? Did uh, Linda tell you about our plans? No, the manager's always the last to know. Angela Brooke and Christopher Waring in Romeo and Juliet. In Cinemascope? No, not a picture. We'll do it on the stage. Is he serious? Yes. Well, is there any reason why I shouldn't be? Well, when do you figure on doing it? Right away. We thought we'd fly to New York next week. Well, will you close up the house? Oh, I'm not going, Joe. Oh, you know how miserable the New York weather is this time of year. Yeah, naturally. But what about that Red Cross benefit? Oh, it'll work out perfectly. Debbie can fly on, meet me in New York before school opens. Joe, she can hardly wait. That's all she talks about. Well, I was on my way out. I'll call your office in the morning. Yeah, do that. Goodbye, darling. 
Right there. Oh, I, I doubt very much if I'll be home for dinner. Bye. Bye, Joe. Bye. Don't bother to wait up for me, Linda. Do you realize this will be the first time he's ever done a play without you in the background to advise him? <laughs> Joe, haven't you caught on yet? He doesn't want my advice anymore. And you know, in a way, it'll be a relief. Maybe I'll get some peace now. So you're just going to sit back and let them go off together this way, huh? I think this time it's different. Maybe the real thing. What makes you think so? Oh, I don't know. Lots of things. But I'll tell you one. Did you notice how he said, uh, Angela Brooke and Christopher Waring and Romeo and Juliet? Yeah. Well, when an actor voluntarily gives an actress first billing, it must be love. Oh, come on, Linda. This is no time to be funny. Oh, Joe, I'm laughing through my tears. Besides, what can I do? Well, you can fight. That's what you can do. Haven't you heard they also fight who only sit and wait? better if the benefit were later on. I mean, well, after Romeo and Juliet have been running a while. No, it's better for you this way. I'm glad you're going to be there for the opening. I wish you'd be there to see me. Oh, I'll see you. I'll be glued to that television set. But it won't be the same thing. Oh, no, sweetie. It's good for you to be on your own. Look here. You don't want one of those stage mothers, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> there he is. Oh, I thought you'd never get here. Well, I had a stop to make. Oh. When glamorous women travel, they always have their left shoulders smothered in orchids. Oh, Mama, <laughs> I know. Oh, thanks, Joe. That's sweet of you, Joe. Say, by the way, the studio has a photographer at the airport. Well, then oh. let's go. Mm -hmm. Mother, will you save the clippings for me? I certainly will. I mean, if there are any. Well, there will be, and you know what? I'm going to buy you the best scrapbook in town. Oh, thank you, Mother. I'll take that. See what a ham I am? Yeah, a real wearing, but I knew it's becoming. <laughs> Next day, Linda bought Debbie a scrapbook and pasted in a few clippings of her high school plays. That night, I took Linda to dinner. Oh, Joe, it was a lovely dinner. Uh, why don't you come over here tomorrow night and we'll watch the benefit on TV? Fine. About seven? Yes, seven Good night, Linda. Good night, Joe. Debbie! Hello, Mother. What are you doing here? Tearing up my scrapbook. I won't be needing it now. What do you mean? What happened? Why aren't you in New York? Debbie, tell me, why? It was a wonderful flight. Daddy was at the airport with flowers. Yes? White violets. He was very sweet and attentive. I see now that he was just trying to make up for things, but I didn't realize it then. Realize what? Oh, that I'm not playing the benefit with him. Not doing the scene. He decided I wasn't quite ready for it, so Angela's going to do it. That's all. Just like that? Mm-hmm. He told me this morning before he left for the theater, so I... I came back here. Without telling your father? I, I sent him a wire from the airport. What did you say in the wire, Debbie? I don't remember exactly. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't really matter. He was probably too busy to read it. After a sensational month on the road, Romeo and Juliet opened in New York. By the next morning, they were sold out for weeks ahead. But a few days later, a strange thing happened. Linda. Well, hello, Chris. What brings you here? I'm back. And I'm back this time to stay. And you're perfectly sure I'll take you back, aren't you? Well, I can't blame you for that. I always have. Oh, sweetheart. I'm afraid you're in for a shot, Chris. I don't want you back. Oh, you're just saying that to punish me, and I deserve it. But you couldn't possibly punish me any more than I've punished myself in the past few days. 
It's a very good performance, Chris. Very good, but that's all it is, a performance. Oh, now, wait a minute. That's hitting below the belt. Now, you listen to me. I closed that show. It was one of the biggest hits in years, and I closed it overnight. Because I suddenly realized that I had made a fool out of myself, so I closed the show and came back to you. Was it only the still, small voice of conscience, Chris? Or did this small paragraph have something to do with it, perhaps? Outstanding as Mr. Waring's contributions to the theater have been, it may well be that his greatest gift of all is Angela Brooke. For years, I have cried out against a procession of middle-aged Juliets. But last night, it seemed to me that Romeo was having a tough time trying to make the wait. Or could it have been the surpassingly fresh young beauty of Miss Brooke that made our first gentleman of the theater seem just a little shopworn? Yes, the play was a hit, and you were an excellent Romeo, but a little too old, a little too heavy. Too much of a contrast to Angela. And that's why you closed the show, my friend, whether you admit it to yourself or not. That's also why you suddenly recovered from an infatuation that made you... made you destroy your child's faith in you. And you know what else you did, Chris, when you closed that show? You threw 50 people out of work, your own people. You let your producer down, and Angela... Oh, my dear, you made a fool of her. And you know why? For only one simple reason. Your vanity couldn't take it. May I explain? Chris, please. You know, you never loved me, nor even Debbie. You've never loved anyone in the world but Christopher Waring. And I hope you still do, because I have a feeling that you're going to spend an awful lot of time with him from now on. Well, Linda, you don't mean that. You can't. Your whole life has been built around me, us. You can't throw it away now. What would you do alone? I don't know, Chris. Certainly it's not going to be easy. Because all these years I thought of nothing but you and keeping our family together. But when I saw Debbie crack up after what happened in New York, Chris, I realized that never would have happened if I'd had a little pride. A little decent pride. So, now I'm going to have a try at that for a little while. Oh, you can't I'm sorry, enough. Chris. I'm really sorry. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going out to dinner. to her guns. With Debbie safe in school and Chris licking his wounds in Europe, she had the pride she'd wanted so badly, and the peace too. Sometimes, though, she confessed to me, it was like the peace of the grave. Then, just before Christmas... Mother! Debbie! Oh, sweetie! Oh, I thought you were coming in on the night train. Oh, I was, but I made a last-minute switch. Oh, oh Mother, on. it's so good to see you. Here, let me look at you. Oh, you look wonderful. And you look so grown up. Mm, I feel grown up, too. <laughs> School does that, you know, and being on your own and, and everything. Yeah. Come on over here and sit down and relax. I want to hear all about your trip. Okay. Mother, I... I have something to tell you. Yes, dear. I've seen Daddy. Oh? I thought he was still in Europe. Well, he's back. He came to the station to meet me. He called me at school and asked me if I'd see him. And, well, I couldn't say no. Mother, I... I didn't want to say no. Mother, remember, you always said it... Nothing so bad, it can't be forgiven. You've missed your father terribly, haven't you? In spite of everything. Oh, haven't you? He's missed us too terribly. Did he say that? 
not in words. He, he didn't want me to feel sorry for him. Oh. He's changed. He's different. Oh, sweetie, Oh, but no. really, he is, Mother. I guess... I guess when you're lonely and unhappy, it, well, it changes you. I suppose so. Mother, he'd love to see you. Well, maybe sometime we can arrange but something. But he's here now. He's here? He's outside. I brought him with me. Oh, you're not angry, are you? No. No, of course I'm not angry. Well, maybe he'd like a cup of tea or a drink. Ask him in. <laughs> Oh, Mother. Daddy, come on in. Here. How are you, Linda? I'm fine, Chris. Just fine. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll be right back. Well, uh... Oh, come on in. Come in and sit down. Thanks. Can I, uh... I... Sorry. Get you a cup of tea or a drink or something? No, thanks. I'll just sit and talk for a while. <sighs> well, of course. No reason we can't be friends, after all. Thanks. I, uh, had no idea you were in New York. I thought you were still in Europe. Have you found a, a play or a picture that you'd like to do, maybe? No, I, matter of fact, I haven't made any plans. I haven't been able to do much of anything except just slog along from day to day without you and Debbie. Oh. You know, it's a funny thing when you've had everything. And then something happens, you lose it. You knew that you threw it away yourself. Linda. Linda. Did you find it in your heart to forgive me? Chris. I, 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 yeah. oh, I don't expect you to take me back, not now at least. Just to forgive me. Debbie had. Could you? For all the unhappy. <laughs> it wasn't all unhappiness. No, I'm glad to hear you say that. You know, for the first time in my life, I've had a good look at myself. Always before I was an actor on and off. Now I'd like to be a person. No more performances. Except on the stage. Oh, Chris, don't make any rash promises. Don't. And you do forgive me? Look, uh, let's not use the word forgiveness. It sounds so sort of one-sided. Some of this must have been my fault, too, you know. Maybe I made it too easy for you. Maybe I liked the picture of myself as the understanding wife. Then you're going to give me another chance? I think we both could use another chance. Would you like to try? Thanks. Now, would you like a cup of tea? I'd love it. Good, I'll fix it for you. I uh, know. on second thought, you can help me. Come along. That I will. Listen to this wise observation. It is not important who is right, only what is right. Well, good night. See you next week.